When a female wolf came across a crying newborn baby, she dragged it into her lair. What happened next will shock you. It was a quiet evening in late spring. Though the skies were clear and the sun was out, a chill had already begun to settle on the forest. A female wolf prowled the landscape in search of a final meal to bring back to her lair before dark, when suddenly a cry pierced the stillness of the air. The wolf's senses were immediately heightened by the sound of prey. Her mouth started watering, and her stomach growled painfully. It had been a while since she'd last eaten. As the she-wolf sprinted through the dense underbrush and neared the source of the cry, the trees gave way to a small clearing, revealing something completely unexpected. A newborn baby lay in the midst of the forest floor. The wolf, who had just lost one of her own cubs, stood frozen at the sight. Ears erect and head low, she took a step forward and began to circle the crying infant cautiously, before gently clasping the tiny human in her powerful jaws. The child's cries ceased momentarily, replaced by an unsettling silence. With the newborn in her grasp, the she-wolf turned and began to retrace her steps back toward her lair. Despite her overwhelming strength, the wolf's movements were surprisingly gentle, as if she was carrying one of her own. It didn't take long before she'd made her way back. Out of the shadows of the den approached another wolf, this one larger and stronger. It was her mate who had awaited her return. His eyes immediately sharpened at the sight of the human, the small intruder within their home. A low growl emitted from deep within his chest, and he bared his teeth. The she-wolf let out a warning in return before gently setting the infant down on a pile of old leaves. She snapped with a sharp and authoritative growl, the fur on her back bristling, and she positioned herself squarely in front of the infant. The alpha male, caught off guard by the sudden assertiveness of his mate, paused mid-lunge. The she-wolf's eyes bore into the alphas, challenging his authority and demanding submission. She was asserting herself not just as a mother, but as his equal. The alpha male, reluctantly acknowledging the unyielding strength of his mate, lowered his head and retreated a step. The she-wolf maintained a vigilant stance, and with a final warning, turned her attention back to the infant. She curled around the baby, her fur a warm shield against the biting cold, while her eyes remained fixed on the entrance of the den. Meanwhile, a few miles away, a hospital was in lockdown. The escape of a patient from the psych ward had plunged the facility into chaos. Staff scrambled to contain the situation, but the patient had managed to evade their grasp. However, what heightened the pandemonium was not just the escape of a psych patient, it was the realization that a one-month-old baby had vanished along with them. Not 45 minutes prior, a figure clad in a disheveled hospital gown moved erratically through the hospital corridors. The escaped patient, a 30-year-old Emily Harper, had become disoriented from her medications and begun to hallucinate. Her delusions caused her to panic and, driven by an unexplainable force, feel the overwhelming need to escape. As she stumbled along in a haze of confusion, her gaze fell upon a corridor leading to the hospital's nursery. In her altered state, Emily's eyes fixated on one particular crib, where a baby lay wrapped in a hospital blanket. Their tiny face bare an uncanny resemblance to what Emily believed to be her own child. Convinced that she was rescuing her child from an unknown threat, Emily hesitated only momentarily before reaching into the crib and lifting the baby into her arms. Without a moment's pause, she clutched the infant tightly against her chest and fled down the corridor and out of the hospital. As Emily vanished into the forest behind the hospital, the staff, only moments behind her, discovered the disrupted nursery and the missing newborn. The realization that the escaped psych patient had taken an innocent life with her sent shockwaves through the hospital, setting in motion a desperate search for both Emily and the abducted child. Once in the forest, Emily's escape was fueled by a compulsion she could not understand. As the trees overhead swallowed her in darkness, a new delusion gripped Emily's mind. Paranoia crawled across her skin, and she became convinced that the forest itself was now a danger threatening both her and the infant she held. After roughly 20 minutes, Emily's pace slowed to an anxious shuffle. 
She scanned her surroundings, her grip on the baby tightening. A clearing ahead seemed to offer a brief respite. Fueled by the delusion that this open space was a haven of safety, Emily hurriedly placed the baby on the mossy ground, whispering words of reassurance that only she could understand. In her irrational fear, Emily believed that leaving the baby in the clearing would protect them both from the imagined threats. A tear streaked down her face. She cast one last anxious glance at the innocent child before retreating back into the sheltering trees. And that's when the abandoned infant had begun to cry, catching the wolf's attention who soon came to its rescue. Emily had gotten a head start. Hospital staff knew she had disappeared into the forest, but there was no way of telling which direction she'd gone in exactly. That immediately called the police to organize a search, but it would be minutes before they arrived. Luckily, a patrol car just a few minutes down the road had spotted Emily making her way through the trees. To them, she was a woman barefoot and dressed in nothing but a hospital gown. This was very concerning to them, but when they called out to her, Emily had fled. They were ready to report the strange figure in the forest when a voice crackled over the radio. Dispatch reported an escaped patient and missing baby in the area. The officers quickly connected the dots and climbed out of their patrol car before sprinting in the direction that Emily had just gone. While making their way to the tree line, one of the officers called for backup. They let dispatch know they were in pursuit and that the baby was either with Emily or couldn't be too far. Armed with this new information, another group of officers were called to the scene and began a five-mile-wide proximity search. They could only hope they would find the baby in time. The two officers closed in on Emily's path. Breaking through the underbrush, they discovered the disoriented patient huddled among the trees, her eyes wild. But there was no baby. The officers shared this information over their radios, confirming that Emily was alone and must have forgotten the child somewhere nearby. They continued to slowly approach and asked for her cooperation, but Emily's sense of self-preservation kicked in. In a panic, she began to resist their attempts to apprehend her. She bit, scratched, screamed, and fought against the men like a rabid animal. They understood she was confused and likely hallucinating, so they restrained her as gently as possible. They waited roughly 20 minutes until she'd calmed before leading her back to the patrol car. It seemed the medications were finally beginning to wear off, leaving her sedated rather than erratic. But this also meant her memory was hazy, and she struggled to recall anything other than her own name. The officers, now having Emily in their custody, pressed on with questions, hoping to extract any valuable information about the missing baby. However, even once in the patrol car, Emily could only mumble incoherently, distant and unresponsive. Back at the hospital, the search for the missing baby continued. It had now been 45 minutes since Emily had escaped with the infant. Another squad car arrived at the hospital, and staff quickly pointed them in the direction that Emily had first fled. Without hesitating, they set off towards the forest, armed with nothing but flashlights. It was easy for them to make out the woman's steps on the ground, but the growing darkness was making it increasingly more difficult to trace. Even despite these odds stacked against them, they continued to move urgently. In the midst of their pursuit, a distant bang of canine units echoed from the east. Another squad of officers were also closing in on the same unknown location with the help of their fellow canines. If the dogs had caught on to the infant scent, that meant they were closer than ever. Back in the den, the she-wolf's ears perked up at the growing sounds within the forest. The distant thud of helicopter blades sliced through the stillness, and the forest seemed to sense the intrusion of human activity. Faint sirens wailed in the distance, civilization invading their secluded world. Yet the distant wails were not near enough to stir immediate concern. Back in the clearing, the officers burst onto the scene, their flashlights cutting through the night. The imprint of where the infant had been left was evident on the ground, but as they scanned the scene, the officer's eyes caught sight of another set of tracks, those of a wolf imprinted in the mud. Fear dawned on the search party as they pieced together the evidence. The canine units gathered the child sent from the clearing, but also caught on to a new one, the she-wolves. With a renewed sense of purpose, the officers and their canine companions set forth once more, following the intertwined smells through the trees. The wolves, now aware of the escalating human presence, exchanged wary glances. 
The rhythmic thump of helicopter blades grew louder, the forest growing with the sounds of human forces. The child had woken from their fitful sleep, and rather than crying, they were unnaturally calm. They gazed up at the wolf and tried to grasp at her fur. The she-wolf, protective instincts ablaze, huddled closer around the infant. She understood that all the noise meant that the humans were looking for the baby she had found, but she didn't want to part with the baby, not yet. But sensing the urgency, the male wolf took a step forward. The she-wolf let out a loud growl, but he continued to approach anyway. He nuzzled against his mate in a show of understanding, before gently picking up the baby in his powerful jaws. He cradled the tiny human with a tenderness that contrasted with his earlier anger. He looked at his partner, who reluctantly stood and followed him outside with a whimper. Together, the wolves made their way away from their den and towards the sounds of the humans. At this point, the voices were only growing louder, causing them to move quickly out of fear. When they arrived roughly 20 feet away and could spot the figures moving, the male wolf sent the baby back down on the earth. He nuzzled against the innocent child one more time before stepping away and disappearing back into the trees. Now it was only the infant and the she-wolf, just as the story had begun. With a final, lingering gaze, the she-wolf communicated her love and protection to the infant. She offered a soft and almost sorrowful howl. It was a farewell, not just to the infant she'd briefly cradled, but to the unexpected story that had unfolded between them. Turning away, the she-wolf joined her mate in the shadows of the trees. Alone once more, the infant began to cry. The officers, following the sound, quickly approached and discovered the baby lying on the forest floor. A wave of relief rushed over them. As the officers lifted the baby and began to carry it away, the cries softened. The child's eyes met the she-wolf's gaze one last time. The officers, unaware, continued their path through the woods and disappeared into the shadows. With a heavy heart, the she-wolf turned around and headed back, her mate following closely behind. The den, once a refuge for the she-wolf's own offspring, now held the lingering scent of both her lost cub and the faint trace of the human child. The she-wolf curled up beside her mate, finding comfort in his warmth while far away. The rescued infant lay cradled in the arms of its human saviors. The baby was soon returned back to the safety of the hospital, where their parents awaited with tears of joy. Unbeknownst to them, the child's journey had been forever touched by the wild. And so, the legend of the she-wolf and the rescued infant became a whispered tale among the trees. As for the rescued infant, she grew up in the warmth of her human home, unaware of the wild creatures that had once cradled her in the heart of the forest. The parents, who had wept tears of joy upon their reunion, treasured the child as a precious gift, their gratitude unspoken for the mysterious forces that had guided the infant safely back to their arms. The legend endured as a reminder that, in the grand story of things, there are moments when the boundaries between the known and the unknown blur, revealing the interconnectedness of all living things. Do you think the baby's experience in the forest will have any lasting impact on her as she grows up? If you liked this heartwarming tale, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for being part of our storytelling community. Until next time, may your days be filled with magic.